worthy. You are faithful, you are holy, you are righteous. There is nobody like you, God. We lift our voices and we give you what belongs to you. Our hallelujah, our thank you, Jesus. Our Lord, you're good. Yes. Our you're so faithful. Our you're so righteous. You are holy. Nobody like you. Because you deserve it. All of the glory belongs to you. All of the honor belongs to you. All of our strength belongs to you. All of the praise belongs to you, oh God. It belongs to you. It belongs to you. Oh. It belongs to you. All of the glory belongs to you. It belongs to you. All of the honor belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah. Yes, it does. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. You deserve it. You Declare all of the glory belongs to you. All of the glory. 
My God in heaven, somebody ought to say you deserve it, God, because my hallelujah belongs to you. All of the glory belongs to you. All of the honor belongs to you, God. And I'm telling you right now, God, there is nothing that I have that would stop me from giving you what your name deserves, what your power deserves, what your love deserves. Can I get about 25 people to say you deserve it, God? You deserve it. How good has God been to you? How many doors? has he opened? How many ways has he made? How much grace and mercy have you received? How many times have you been protected and shielded? How many times has the hand of the enemy been stopped? How many times has he done what no other power can do? How many times have you went crawling on your hands and knees to touch the hem of his garment and God reached out and gave you the healing that you need? I declare to you right here and right now, you ought to come and say, my hallelujah, my hallelujah right here and right now it belongs to you God my hallelujah God all of the glory and all of the honor and all of the power God I'm so grateful God I stand in awe of who you are because you deserve it you deserve it you deserve it 
I look at my husband. I look at my children. I look at my parents. I look at my hands. I look at my feet, God. I, I look right here and right now and say, God, my hallelujah, my hallelujah belongs to you because you deserve it. And so from the bottom of your heart, you ought to give God your best praise. Come on, don't let church online steal your worship. Don't let being in your living room and being in your bedroom and being at work and being in the car, don't let anything right here and right now. I dare those of you watching on Facebook and those of you watching on YouTube, I dare you to say, God, all of the glory, all of the glory. I dare you to let out a hallelujah. Throw your head back like you're sitting right there in the sanctuary of the church because you have declared that your home is the sanctuary, that the Holy Spirit is welcome and you want him to walk up and down the aisleways of your home, the hallways of your home, the sanctuary of your living room, the sanctuary of the side of your bed, right there in the kitchen. I dare you to say all of the glory, all of the glory belongs to you. Because I don't know about you, but he deserves it. He deserves it. He deserves it from the bottom of my soul. He deserves it. I praise God right here and right now for each and every one of you that came here this morning and you came here with worship on your mind. You came here to love on God. You came here to let God know that can't nobody do you like Jesus. I want you to do me a favor and gather all of your family and bring them here to worship with us. I want you to ask them to come on into this place of high praise, this high place of high praise and just say, Lord, I want you to have your way here in my home. So come on, ask somebody who is in another room, ask somebody who is maybe upstairs or downstairs, ask somebody who was laying in the bed and didn't wake up. Can you just come to worship with me? We make time for anything and everything else. Can you do me a favor and just come and make time to worship the Lord with me right here and right now? Come on. This is where we say, God, I love you. God, I adore you. God, I give you my all right here and right now, because I don't know about you, but he deserves it. He deserves it. He deserves it. He deserves it. It is such a beautiful honor to be here in worship with you today. I praise the Lord for bringing all of us together. Thank you so much, Tony. Thank you, Marlena. Thank you, Shelly. Thank you, Lynn and Kathy. Thank you, Tanya. Thank you, each and every one of you for being here. Thank you, Sharnice. I praise the Lord with you today. Come on. Can everybody just give Give one praise report. Can you just put down one thing on the page that you're grateful to God? Just one thing that he deserves the glory for. Just one thing that he deserves your gratitude for. Just one thing that he deserves your thank you for. Can you imagine that we were in the sanctuary and you were shouting it out right now? And so since we can't shout it out verbally where everybody else here online can hear you, can you just type what he deserves all of the glory, why he deserves all of the praise right here and right now? Now, I'm telling you, I love our God. I love our God. And I just praise his strong and most excellent name. We are excited for each and every one of you that continue to join us here um, every Sunday at 10 a.m. for this amazing online worship. We come and we have full blown worship. So don't ever come and think you're just looking at a word and you're just looking at somebody that just went live and, and, and there was no thought, no full blown God honoring, Jesus feel, Holy Ghost inspired, jump up and dance, lift your hands and shout praise and worship is what we come here to do. But this isn't the only day. We're all also here Monday through Friday for the Daily Hope Devotion. So we would love to see you here on Facebook Live and on YouTube Live every single day at 6.53 a.m. And then make sure you come back on Wednesday nights. Wednesday nights, we come in and we're so grateful to God for the time that we get to spend with him um, in our Bible class.
All right, we back now. We had a little technical difficulty, but that's all right. We back and we got it working right here and right now. And so I hope you hung in there with us and, and listen, don't let the devil get any victory when he tries to stop our, our praise and stop, tries to stop our worship. And so we thank God for each of you that comes in to get your word and to be a part of our strong word. Our God is so faithful and so good to us and all of the things that he keeps showing us that we can be a part of. So make sure you come out for Bible class. And then we also would love to have you be a part of our prayer team. Our prayer team is just on fire for the Lord. We're excited for all that they're doing for the Lord. They meet every Monday at 9 a.m. And all you have to do is call in, call in with the Lord and, and, and you'll be able to call in. The number is there on the screen and anybody can join and anybody can can be a part. And it is powerful. It is so awesome. It is so good. And so we would love to have you be a vibrant part of the ministry. And so you come on in and you be a part because I'm telling you, God's word is magnificent. God's word is beyond magnificent. And so we want you to be a part. We also want to make sure um, that you stay faithful on the fast, that you stay faithful on our fast. Let me share this with you now. For those of you that know we're right in the middle of this 41 day fast, and I want you to stay faithful. Don't cheat. Don't quit. Somebody say, don't cheat. Don't quit. Don't cheat. And don't quit. Make sure that you stay faithful to what God has for us. So that you, you can say, I hear I do do. Listen, y'all know when I, I had to preach at another church, so we're going to make sure that we get this in. So let me get this in. I want to uh, make sure that you guys can see this now. I hope that it's working. I really do. Because listen, when I'm coming from one service and going into the other, I want to make sure we're able to do everything that God has for us to do. And so I want you to know that you've been blessed to, to be a blessing. You have been blessed to be a blessing. And one of the things we're going to be doing is we're going to be having this blanket drive. And this blanket drive is, is absolutely that, is to allow you to bless others. And so whether you're here in LA or in one of the other states, we want you to be a blessing. Hold on, let me just get this off the screen so it can play right. Hold on, y'all y'all give me a moment because listen, the, the enemy trying me right now, but I, I'm not giving him any kind a victory. None. Zero. <laughs> zero, zilch, zero, zilch. Let's go back to where we were. So this blanket drive, you guys, there's going to be a meeting tomorrow, tomorrow on Monday, which is February the 1st at 6 p.m. It's a Zoom meeting. The ID is right there on the screen. If you want to help, if you want to be a part of this think tank meeting, we want to have you show up for that Zoom meeting. You don't have to be on the screen if you don't want to. You can just call it. It allows you to just have your voice be heard. But we want you to help us be a blessing. We're going to give away blankets um, in, within the next week to 10 days. And then we're giving away tents, tarps, and socks in our next outreach. So we want you to be a part of that Think Tank Zoom meeting tomorrow for Hope Cares in this blanket drive for 2021. Then we want you to make sure, stay faithful on the fast, stay faithful on the fast. Whatever you do, don't you quit. Keep reading your book every day. Stay up with the reading. Stay on top of the life of your prayer partner and encouraging them. And then, like I told you, make sure you're a part of our ministry team and join when you get a chance. Coming up this Saturday, the first and third Saturday of every month, all of our ministers and our ministers in training, mark your calendar for this Saturday at 10 a.m. Your next installment of your ministers in training class will take place. And if you want to take this class because you as a leader feel that the call of God is on your life, you are more than welcome to give me a call and we can discuss your placement and your purpose and even your power in this class. Remember, there are multiple ways to find um, the church service. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram, Twitter and YouTube. And so get the word out. Facebook kind of let us out of jail, y'all. They kind of still have us in a little bit of Facebook jail. But you know what? That's all right right? If, if you miss everything else, you go to YouTube and you can watch all the services, the classes, and the devotions. Sundays at 10, Monday through Friday at 6.55, and then of course Wednesdays at 7.07 for our Bible class. I also want you to remember that Sunday school is starting next Sunday. It is a call-in class. All you have to do is call in to our prayer line number, which is on the screen, 605 468 
8030. You call in and that will allow you to be a part of the fellowship of Sunday school. I tell everybody, whenever you desire to really know the word, you have to make a commitment to build your foundation in Sunday school. Every great leader, preacher, teacher, evangelist, prophet that I know has a strong history going back to their childhood. And some didn't start like me because I didn't go to Sunday school as a child. I went as an adult and it helped me to learn the Bible. And so if you want to learn the Bible in a new and profound way, come to Sunday school at 8 a.m. That's literally two hours before worship service starts. It goes from eight to nine. You'll have an hour to have breakfast with your family and then come on in to worship. The next thing we want you to be prepared for is um, our book of Exodus class. This is what I was telling you guys earlier about coming to Bible class. When I tell y'all this class is so fire, this class is amazing. And when I say I love it, I just love it. I beyond love it. And so if you have not made it out on Wednesdays at 7.07 for this study in the book of Exodus, you got to come out because it is beyond amazing. And then also too, the other thing that keeps blowing my mind of our Zoom after worship, our Zoom afterglow that we do every single Sunday is it's awesome. So as immediately following church today, all you have to do is log into Zoom. This gives us 15 minutes to gather, to catch up, to check in, to laugh, to pray, to just see each other and make sure everybody is okay. And, and it's so good. It's so good. It gives us that touch, that point of contact that we need so that we don't feel so isolated. So yes, you do have the daily hope devotion that you can watch and, and that's good and all of that, but there's nothing like seeing each other. That is always just an extra dose of love for each other. Now, listen, if anybody has any prayer needs, you're experiencing any type of sickness or death, make sure you reach out to our very own uh, Minister Betty Horn. Her number is there on the screen, and, and I'm sure she'll also type it in the comments for you, for all of you that need it, because I want anybody that's going through to know that there is help for you. And, and, and Minister Betty Horn is the assistant pastor, and she will be able to handle your needs, get the word to me if you cannot reach me directly. So we want you to have that. Listen, the only way we know that you're going through is for you to let us know. Please don't just type it in the comments. Please um, don't just um, hope that a text got through, get, gets through. Reach out and let us know what you're going through. Now on our uh, list this week, we're lifting up uh, Camille and Julie Bragg and Jennifer. We're lifting them up. Um, their mom is making her transition. So we're lifting this family up. We're lifting up our own Tessa son who had a car accident. And if there are any other prayer needs that I'm not aware of, please make sure that you put that down on the comments, put it in the comments so that we can see that um, for you, because we want to meet your needs as well. And again, we cannot help what we do, do not know. We know of all of those announcements and all of the the things in ministry we're doing and all of it help. It is now time for us to worship in our tithe and our offering. If you are a tither, this means that you give the Lord 10% out of every dollar that you get. Every dollar that the Lord puts in your hand, you reach back and you give a dime back to the Lord. And you say, Lord, because I love your faithfulness in my life, I'm faithful to your kingdom. Because I love the way that you give to me and that you help me, Lord, I'm ready to help the kingdom. Listen to this quote, Lord, help me trust you even through the unexpected twists and turns of life. Listen, we're living in an age and a stage where life will twist you, flip you upside down, and turn you right side back up. But when you declare as Luke 8, verse 5 through 8 says, I'm a seed sower. Come on, I got any seed sowers. Can I get at least 40 people to type it in the comments from Facebook and from Instagram and YouTube that I am a seed sower. When you're a seed sower, you partner with God. You partner with the ministry because you believe in seeing souls saved. You believe in seeing hope given. You believe in seeing fellowship and joy. You believe in seeing love shared and you believe in seeing the kingdom grow. And so all of our seed sowers take this opportunity to seek the Lord and plant your best seed. You can give online at thehopeone.com or you can use the Zelle or Chase Quick Pay. The address, the email address to use is fogministry1 at gmail.com. Of course, you can use the cash app at the hope one, the hope one 
um, and for our cash app for tithes and offering. And then of course you can mail your contributions to the favor of God ministry at 10736 Jefferson Boulevard, number 689, Culver City, California, 902. Three zero. Listen, if you have your offering ready or you gave already digitally, you sold your seed earlier this week, or you're doing it right now, let's seek the Lord and turn to the Lord together right now about our giving. Father God, in your mighty name, we love you. In your mighty name, we praise God. In your mighty name, we just give you glory and we give you, Lord Jesus, how we love you and how we lift you up, God. We thank you for for what you do. And we thank you for how you love us. And we thank you, God, for how you keep us. We thank you that you are faithful and you are always on time, God. Bless every seed sower, God. Bless every person that has a heart, a cheerful heart of a giver, God. God, let no one have the heart and the mindset of a thief, God. Let no one decide they're going to rob you from all that which you have poured into their life, God. But let every person bring the tithe into the storehouse, that there may be meat in your house to continue to change lives and save souls and restore hope, God, and shine light, God. We thank you for the privilege to worship you in giving. We bless you now, God. Now, if there's anybody in a financial storm, if there's anybody in a financial battle, God, we pray right now, God, for their breakthrough. We pray right now, God, that they will have a different place in their life of breakthrough with you, God, where you are able to bless them and keep them better than they've ever been blessed or kept before. And so have your way, God, now in the mighty name of Jesus. We love you. We honor you. And we thank you in Jesus name. Let every heart say amen. Amen and amen. Thank you, family. Thank you so much for letting me start off by preaching at another church and then come on in and join y'all. I just preached my soul out and I'm ready to preach to you too. Somebody say, I'm ready for the word. I'm, I'm ready for the word. The word is so good. When I say it's good, listen, we've been talking about um, this year being our year not to uh, reset, but our year to be set. And so what I want you to do is I want you to get it in your mind that you are going to be one that God can count on uh, to not try to go back to what you already have done, but be one that God can count on to do what hasn't been done, to be a person that says, Lord, I hear you. Lord, I follow you and I don't want to return and I don't want to go back, but I want to do something different. Come on. I need somebody to type it on the screen for me. Do something different. Do something different. This is where you say, Lord, I want to do something different for you. Let me get to this right here and right now. Y'all know it take me a minute to get this stuff going where I want it to go because it's our preaching time. It's our preaching time. Time to preach the word. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for what you have for us, because what the Lord says to us is that he wants us to be able, he wants us to be able to not return to that which we have done, but to do a new thing. Remember, that's our key scripture, Isaiah 43. Behold, I do a new thing. That new thing that God is doing for us is magnificent. That new thing that God is doing for us is to take us where we've never been so that we can do what we've never done. Hold on. This computer is stuck. I'm telling y'all this enemy, he is trying one today. Holy father, help me, Jesus. Hold on, y'all. We got to figure out why the computer is locked. Why is the computer locked? I can't come back to the screen. I know y'all can still hear me. So y'all just get ready for the word because I don't care if you don't see me. I'm going to preach this word. If this is the only screen I'm able to put up on this screen all day, I don't know why this is not coming on here. Hold on. Hold on. There it go. It didn't want to let me go. It didn't want to let me go. Here I am, y'all. Here I am. Listen, you know what? I, I, I feel now I just need to pray right now because right now I'm, I'm not going to let the enemy steal my joy. Somebody say, don't let him do it. Don't let him do it. Father God, you have your way because this enemy wants to fluster. This enemy wants to confuse. He wants to stir up some mess, God. But I'm about to preach your word, God, to somebody get saved. I'm about to preach your word, God, until somebody fall in love with you and believe your word like they never believed it before. So let me preach it with 
with fire, God. Let me preach it down in my soul, God, until it comes through me, God, from you, God, to I am nothing. Hide me behind the cross and up under your blood until somebody hears no voice but yours, feels no power but yours, feels the shift of the atmosphere that you are bringing. So have your way, Holy Ghost. Thank you for telling me to stop and call on your name. I love you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody say, don't let him win. Don't let him win. He cannot do it. He cannot do it. Listen, what I want us to do is I want us to get into this place where we say, God, because I love you and because I believe in who you are and I believe in how you move, I am going to be one of the ones that absolutely you can count on to run my race. When we talk about this being our year of of to be set and not just our year to reset. When we talk about that, what that means, let me get this uh, on the screen for you guys, because I want you to see it. Devil, you're not going to get me today. (laughs) You're not going to get me, devil, not today. Somebody say, no, he won't do it. No, not today, devil. Hold on. Let me make sure I can get this on the screen so y'all can see it, because I want I want the scriptures that I have for you to show up on the screen so you can. Amen. Amen. Thank you, G. Listen, that's all right. I know how to page through all of that. Listen, <laughs> I'm telling y'all, we having a moment today. We're talking about running our race because when we start talking about this isn't my year to reset, but this is my year to be set. This is when we start saying, I am going to run the race that God has for me. That means it's my time not to run the race you think I should run, not to to run the race that you think is convenient, but to run the race that God has for me. Come on, can I get about 40 people to say it's my time to run my race, to run my race? I got to run my race. My daddy told me what he wanted me to do. My mama told me what she wanted me to do, but I got to run my race. But how many of you know, we can't run our race if we don't know our track and we don't know how to get in our lane. Somebody say, you got to know your track and you got to know how to get in your lane. Because when you don't know your track and you don't know how to get in your lane, what will happen is you will eventually drift over into something God never asked you to do. You will drift over into doing something God never gave you the purpose to do. You will begin to to do stuff. God say, I didn't I didn't ask you to do that. So what are you doing over there? And and why are you doing that? My my thing that I've asked you to do is to just be awesome all by yourself, celebrating what I put inside of you. I I didn't ask you to imitate. I I didn't ask you to duplicate. I've given you a race to run and I've put that race before you. When we started the year off and we began to talk about the fact that I'm not going to reset, which means I'm not going back to what I used to do, but I'm going to do the new thing. We looked at Isaiah 43 and we said, God, I perceive you're doing a new thing. I perceive God that is springing up in my life. And until I forget the things that lie behind, let me, let me put that on the screen. Thank you, Holy Spirit for reminding me, put it on the screen because some people need to see this word. And some people need to hear what God is saying to us today in his word. Turn to Isaiah 43. I'm going to come back to our key scripture, but I I just want to share Isaiah 43 with you in detail. Because when we looked at this the first time, we looked at it from the standpoint of verses 18 and 19. And I want you to see this whole scripture with me so that we can look at it from beginning to end, from beginning to end, because it's how, when I say it's powerful, it's powerful, baby. You ain't never seen nothing like this. It's so good how faithful God is to his word. It's, it's so good how faithful God is to his might and his power. And when we take a look at what he's doing in us and what he's doing for us, we're able to say, I see the new thing. Somebody say, I see the new thing. I see the new thing. So get your Bible because I want you to underline in your Bible as well, because I'm going to go through a couple of these verses that I want you to be aware of as we launch into running our race because the new thing can only be ran if we let go of the old thing. What God does at the beginning of this chapter is he begins to qualify himself. He qualifies himself by first saying, it's me. It's me. This is what the Lord says. He says, I created you. I'm he who created me. How can God be qualified to tell me about the new thing? Because he's the one that created me. He says, how, what else else? He said, I formed you. I formed you before you were in your mother's womb. He said, I formed you. I purposely chose you. He said, and you don't have to have fear. You know why? Because I also have redeemed you. I have redeemed you. He said, I created you 
I formed you and I redeemed you. Now he said, I am summoning you by name, Jesus. Come on, somebody. I need you to hear that right now by the spirit of the living God. He's calling your name. How many of you can hear the song down in your spirit where they say he knows my name? He knows my name. And when he calls me, he tells me to run the race that he has put in front of me. He's summoning me. Why? Because he says, you are mine. Come on, somebody say, you are mine. I belong to God. I belong to God. How many of you can repent right now for all of the people that you gave yourself away to, for all of the things that you gave yourself away? But today you say to yourself, I am his and he is mine. So I'm going to run the race that he said in front of me. Look at verse two. He said, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. I don't care what you go through this year. I know they talking about the death toll rising. I know they said another hundred thousand may die in the next 60 days. I know that that is a level of suffering we never seen. But he said, when you pass through, somebody say, I'm not going to get stuck. I'm passing through. He said, I will be with you. He said, when you pass through the rivers, listen, I might need to go through the river to get through the other side, but it will not sweep over me. How many of you know that he's a red sea parting God? And I don't care what he got apart in order for you to make it. What I can tell you right here and right now is that it will not sweep over you. Somebody say it won't sweep over me. It won't sweep over me. It won't come over my nose and it, it won't come over my eyes and it certainly won't drown me. Why? Because God said it won't sweep over me. So don't you let the red sea and the fact that you're standing on on a bank you ain't never stood in applying for a job you ain't never applied for. Don't you let that scare you. Why? Because God said, I will be with you. Somebody say, be with me, Lord. Be with me, Lord. He said, I will be with you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your mighty word. Thank you for your mighty word. Thank you for your mighty word. Listen to what he says. He says, for I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel. He said, I'm qualifying myself. I'm reading you my resume. He said, let me brag on myself. He said, I'm the Lord, your God. Somebody said, there he go telling me that he's mine again. The Holy One of Israel, I'm your savior. What do you need to be saved from? Give it to God. What do you need to be rescued from? Give it to God. He says, since you are precious and honored in my sight, and because I love you, I will give people in exchange for you. Come on, somebody say, I'm precious. I'm honored and I'm loved. I'm precious. I'm honored and I'm loved. This is what lets me know that it can't be my year to reset. This has to be my year to be set. And where do I want to be set today? In the race that he has for me to run. I want to be set in the race that he has for me to run. Listen, somebody, he says in verse five, do not be afraid. Listen, this is no time to slow down and, and not run your race because you're afraid. Somebody say, let go of fear. Let go of fear. Come on. I need 40 people to type that on the screen for me. Let go of the fear. Fear. You got to let it go and you got to let it go right now. He says, everyone who is called by my name, whom I have created for my glory, whom I have formed. He said, that's who I'm going to lead out. That's who I'm going to lead out. Now, listen, he says, you are my witnesses, declares the Lord. Listen, I need you to remind yourself of what the Lord has already done. What are you a witness to that God has done? Come on. Can I get just about 15 of you to type something that you're a witness of that God has done? Nobody did it but God. You don't trust anybody like you trust God. Somebody say, I'm a witness to it. I'm a witness to it. It had to be God. He's been so faithful and so good to me that I can't help but praise his holy name. And I'm a witness. Come on. Somebody said he healed my body. Somebody say he brought my prodigal child home. Somebody said he helped my marriage. Somebody said, said he healed my relative. Somebody said he took my burdens. Somebody said he's a heavy load share. Come on. Somebody say, I'm a witness. I'm a witness. He said, what are you a witness to? He said, let me brag on myself again. Before me, there was no God that was formed, nor will there be one after me. When I began to run this race, 
I don't run the race because I'm following any old voice that tells me to run the race. I follow it because my God, the only God, the one who there is no other God that was formed before him, nor will there be one after him. He, even he is the Lord. And he says, apart from me, there is no other savior. I don't care who try to talk you into the fact that they'll save you and that they'll hold you down. He said, I'm the one that saves you. He said, I have revealed I have saved and I have proclaimed. I need you to hold on to that. He said, I have revealed, I have saved and I have proclaimed. Now let's get down here to our key verse. He says, forget the former things. If you're going to run your race, you got to let go of all the stuff that has slowed you down in the past. You got to say this stuff can't be around my neck anymore. This stuff can't be around my feet anymore. I got to get this stuff off my back and off my shoulders. Why? Because he says, see, I'm doing a new thing. And it springs up. Do you not perceive it? Listen, I, I want to stop here where I stopped with the earlier service and tell you, just look at that. See, aren't you ready to see your track? Aren't you ready to see your lane? Aren't you ready to get in it so God can do a new thing for you? I pray that you are. I pray that this is the desire of your heart. And I pray that you say, God, do a new thing for me. I know it's springing forth. I know that I perceive it. And I know that you're making a way for me in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Listen, I don't care how dry, how brittle, how broken it has been. God said, I'm making a way for you. But if you trust me, then you can trust that I will get you to the place and I will get you to the point where you will be able to say to yourself, God, I'm running my race. Somebody say here, I'm running my race. I'm, I'm running my race. I'm, I'm running my race right here and I'm running my race right now. You know why? Because my God is doing a new thing for me. My God is doing a new thing for me. Why? Because he's just that good. He's just that good. Listen, let me take you back to these slides. Listen, this thing want to keep on. We got to keep on going back to the beginning. I'm on a different computer. If those of you trying to figure out why is pastor having so many, because I had to run the other service on my other computer. So I'm running this service on this computer. How many of y'all know there's more than one way to skin a cat? I will skin a cat. Now don't play with me. Don't play with me. I will skin a cat. He says, it's my time to run my race. I want you to get to the place where you say, this is the race I'm running. I, be I behold the new thing. I see the new thing and I'm ready to not dwell on the past. Now he says, in order for us to do that, we got to let go of what we possibly thought was the order. If I'm going to run my race that God has, then I got to let go of what I thought was the order that I should run it in order to be set in it. Listen, what we've been taught is on your mark, get set, go. That, that's what we've been taught. On your mark, get set, go. This is what we have heard when we were starting a project. This is what we have heard when we were about to run a race. This is what we have heard when we were going to do a new thing. But I submit to you that maybe that's the old way of do doing things. And we need to let that go. We need to say to God right here and right now, listen, I'm ready to try something new. And so I block out on your mark, get set, go. And I embrace in order for me to be set on my my track in my lane that I got to flip that thing around instead of on your mark, get set and go It's go get set on your mark. Somebody write that for me. It's go get set on your mark. I'm not going to get on my mark first and then get set and then go. I'm a go first. Somebody say go first. You got to go first. What does that mean? Come on. Let's look at what the word of God says to us. If I'm going to go first, we're going to use the acronym G O. It means I got to get it out or I I got to get it off. I got to get out or get it out or I got to get it off or get it out of me. Come on, somebody. I got to get it off of me or get it out of me, or I got to get out of that place. Is there a place that God wants you to get out of? Is there a place that God says, I'm ready for you to come out of this place? You know how he told Abraham, get thee from thy father's house, go to a place. He said, God, where am I go? He said, go. And I will show you when you are ready to run the race. You say, God, show me. I'm going to start running because I walk by faith and not by sight. And when I get there, God, I'm going to get there 
there and know that I made it by faith because I went because you told me to go. Come on, somebody. I need you to make sure you don't have that Israelite mindset that we've been talking about on Wednesday nights where for 400 years they prayed to come out of Egypt. Lord, get us out. Lord, we're in bondage. Lord, we're suffering here. And then as soon as God sent a deliverer and the deliverer brings them out of Egypt, they get out in the middle of the wilderness and say, now we want to go back. Ooh, Jesus, help me, Holy Ghost, right now. Is there anybody under the sound of my voice that wants to go back to Egypt because you forgot how brutal Egypt is? You forgot that Egypt hurts. You forgot that Pharaoh is a, is a brutalizer. You forgot that Pharaoh is abusive. You forgot that Pharaoh don't care anything about you. And now you want to go back. But God says, when you decide that you're going to be set in your lane to run your race, the first thing you say is, I got to get out. Now, I don't know what your Egypt is and I don't know who your Pharaoh is, but baby, if God say go, you got to go and don't let anything keep you and don't let anything slow you down. You make up your mind right here and right there that I'm getting out of here and I'm getting out of here right now. I'm getting out of here and I'm getting out of here right now. Why? Because I hear the Lord telling me so I hear it down in my soul. I hear go down in my soul. I hear God said, don't you make Egypt to be something that it was. He said, Egypt is still Egypt. Isn't that what we said on Wednesday? Egypt is still Egypt and, and Pharaoh is still Pharaoh. So I got to get out. Somebody, I don't know where you are, but you got to get out. You got to get out because God is telling you to get out. Now, listen, I, I, I said this earlier. Anytime we begin to follow the Lord telling us to get out of a job and get out of a relationship and get out of a situation, we're all always going to have naysayers. The naysayers say, stay with what's familiar. Stay with what's easy. You know what? I'm scared for you. You ought to be scared. You don't have any support systems. You better stop listening to the faithless. The faithless are not your support system. The God who just told you that you would walk through the fire, the God that just told you you would walk through the flood, the God that just told you beside me, there is no other God. That's the God you listen to. And if God tell you go, go get that vaccine, then you go get the vaccine. If God tell you go and go to that other state, you go to that state. If God tell you to get out of this relationship, baby, pack your bags and get out or pack those bags and put them out. Either way, somebody got to go. And if it's yours, you put out. You don't get out. Somebody, come on, somebody. You put out. You don't get out. Why? Because you hear that go down in your soul. When I was leaving Detroit, I had all kind of naysayers tell me, listen, you don't know anybody there. You better stay on your job. You can't. That, that, that's not what we do. We, we don't leave our job. You got to stay on your job. I said, but I hear God and I know I hear God telling me to move to California. And the naysayers got louder and louder and louder. And they were like, no, I don't think you should do that. Well, I think that I'm going to listen to God. And the worst thing that can happen is what? I make a mistake and then I come back home. That's what I told them. Is that the worst thing that can happen is I come back home. But what I don't want to do is I don't want to sit all my life wondering what if. Come on, somebody, you supposed to go buy that house. But you sitting up listening to the naysayers. I had a naysayer tell me I wouldn't go get that mortgage if I was you. That mortgage is three times what you paying in rent. I said, but I hear God telling me that I'm a homeowner. I hear God tell me that I'm a lender and, and not a bower. I hear God telling me to go and get this house that I don't have to stay here in rent. But naysayers who have never known anything but Egypt, when you say it's time for me to get out of renting, they will not back you up. When you say it's time for me to get out of shacking, they will not back you up. You know why? Because they can't get out of Egypt because they haven't gotten Egypt out of them. Woo. Holy Ghost. Oh, geez. I got to take y'all back to the slide. Now y'all know this thing is going to make me go back to the beginning. Y'all pause and hold on. We're going to go back to the beginning and I'm going to get to this slide that tells us what we got to go from, what we have to go from. Let me share this on the screen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm telling y'all, I love God. I love God. I love him in all his might. I love him in all his glory. I love him in what he does. Listen, when God says to us, go, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Let me get back to that slide. He says to us, you either got to get out of Egypt or you got to get Egypt out of you or you have to do both. Let me get back to this slide. I told y'all this thing is not working right because this is on my other computer. So this is all the stuff we said we're going to do. Now he says that go, that G-O means get it out or get it off. Now, now that I didn't heard him say get out of Egypt, now I got to make sure I get Egypt out of me. 
was my scripture for that. Hebrews chapter 12, verse one. He says, wherefore seeing that we are also compassed about with a great cloud of witnesses. He says, let us lay aside every weight, every Egyptian weight that's on your mind, every Egyptian weight that's on your faith, every single sin that's trying to hold you back and stop you from getting it out or getting it off. I'm telling you right here and right now, you got to say to yourself, if I'm going to run the race that God had, I, I got to lay aside. Listen, he said, if you don't lay aside the weight and the sin, he said, that thing is going to beset you. That means it's going to snare you. It's going to trap you. It's going to trip you. Is there anybody under the sound of my voice that's tired of tripping, tired of falling over the same thing, over the same person, and to the same dumb stuff, and to the same stupid situation, and to the same darkness over and over again? He said, you know what you're going to do if you run your race. He say, run with patience. The race that is set before us. Somebody say, you got to go. Somebody say, you got to go. You got to get it out and you got to get it off. If you have gotten yourself out of Egypt, now get Egypt out of you by laying aside every weight. Somebody say, lay aside. Because listen, when the naysayers start telling you, you better stay, you say, you know what? God said, he'll never leave me and he'll never forsake me. God said, he will protect me. And God said, he will provide for me. What if the nation of Israel had stayed in Egypt because they were worried about what they were going to eat, they never would have found manna. What if they were worried about what they were going to drink? They never would have seen water come out of the rock. Come on, somebody. Their shoes never wore out. When they came to Red Seas, God parted the Red Seas. When they saw an enemy, God said, this enemy that you see, you will see no more. You will never see the manifestation of the glory of God if you don't get out. And if you don't get out, You'll never be able to run your race. It's your time to run your race. So the first thing you got to do is go. What's go? Somebody type that. Go stands for get out or get it out. Go stands for get it out, get out, or get it off. The next thing that he says here, he says the second thing we got to do if we're going to run our race. Remember, the old way was on your mark, get set, go. We flip that thing and go is first because we got to get it off of us if we ever going to run. So now we get set. What does get set mean? It means the SET, this acronym, SET means I surrender to elevated thinking. Jesus, speak this word today. I surrender to elevated thinking. What's our scripture? Colossians chapter three, verse two says, set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. How many people can say, I know I'm not running because my mind is on things beneath. I know I'm not walking because I know my mind is on things beneath. I know that I keep trying to reset because I won't put my mind on things above. Somebody say, elevate your thinking. You need higher thinking so you can do higher living. If you do higher living, you'll be able to do higher loving. If you do higher loving, you'll be able to have a higher faith. If you have a higher faith, you'll have a higher power. But what I can tell you right now, that the only thing you're going to do is reset if you don't allow yourself to be set in surrendered, elevated thinking. Elevated thinking. I want thinking that is above where I am. I want thinking that is above where my mama been and where my daddy been and, and, and above of what I've seen other people do. I believe that God is calling me higher. Didn't you remember what he said in Isaiah 43? I'm summoning you by name. Somebody say, God is calling me to a higher place. God is calling me to a higher place. And I'm ready to have elevated thinking where I climb my way out and where I climb my way up. Because if I I'm going to run my race. I got to go and then I got to get set. And then the last thing I got to do is now I got to get on my mark. Somebody say, wait a minute, Pastor Don, I just logged in. I thought it was on your mark, get set, go. Let me take you back because you might still be thinking of the old way. So let me take you back. That's the old way of thinking of things. The old way was on your mark, get set, go. But we said when we going to run our race, what's the name of today's message? Today's message is I'm. it's time for me to run my race. It's time for me to run my race. So if I'm going to perceive the new thing and I'm not going to live according to on your mark, get set, go, I'm going to turn this thing on his head and I'm going to say that I'm going to go and then I'm going to get set and I'm going to get set on my mark. And when I get set on my mark, what that means for me is that I can magnify and reveal our King. Magnify, M 
and reveal A-R. Our king is the K. Mark, magnify and reveal our king. Where do I magnify and reveal our king? Everywhere he want me to. Everywhere he take me. Every door that he opens for me. Every time he tell me to open my mouth. Why? Because he said you are the light of the world. You are a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. He said nobody lights a lamp and put it under a basket, but they put it on a lampstand. I dare you to take your place on the stand baby. I dare you to start giving light to everybody in the house. What does that mean? When I begin to magnify and reveal the king, I start right here at home. Listen, listen, come on, Holy Spirit. I feel you this morning. I, I feel you this morning speaking. I feel you this morning leading. I, I feel you this morning loving. I, I feel you this morning showing us, God, that I got to get on my mark. I got to get where God want me. I got to do what God tell me to do. Getting on my mark at home means that I start having church at home. Listen, your kids may never come to digital church. They may never log in with you. They may never look at it on YouTube or Instagram or Facebook or anything else. But baby, get your Bible out and, and hold your Bible in your hand and say, we about to shine right here because I'm about to magnify and reveal the king. Surely you didn't come to church today for you to soak up all the power. Surely you didn't come to church today for you to soak up all the glory. Surely you came so that you could shine when you leave here. And when you shine, you don't go out the front door. Baby, you stand on this side of the door and say, I'm going to shine to my spouse first. And I'm going to shine to my roommate first. And I'm going to shine to my children first. We we're going to pray in here. And so this week you start out, we're going to have 15 minutes of church. We're going to praise the Lord. We're going to worship the Lord. We're going to get us a word. This is our word for the day. And you're going to tell your kids about it being their time to run their race. You're going to take them to that scripture. You're going to walk them through what you heard. And y'all going to say, bam, 15 minutes. That was church today. Why? Because I got on my mark. And on my mark, I magnify and I reveal the king. I magnify him if I'm in the cleaners. I magnify him if I'm in the store. I magnify him if I'm at the funeral. I reveal him to everybody that wants to cross my path. And if you don't like my Jesus, then baby, don't cross my path. Because when you come across my path, I'm going to shine like Jesus tell me to shine. When you cross my path, ain't no rock going to cry out for me. Why? Because I'm on my mark now. I'm on my mark now. I'm running my race now. I'm doing what the Lord wanted me to do now. And I don't know who this is for. But God said to you, listen, this is not your year to reset. This is your year to be set. This is your year to make up in your mind. I hear God. I trust God. I believe God. I'm running for God. I'm living for God. I'm serving for God. And I'm going to get in the place that God wants me to be in. And I got my go because I'm going to do my purging. I'm going to purge whatever he tell me to lay aside. Whatever has been besetting me, I'm not going to stop it or allow it to stop me from besetting. And so I'm going to be where God wants me to be. I'm going to do what God wants me to do. I won't be afraid and I won't be nervous and I'm not going to shake and I'm not going to shiver because I hear God telling me that I thought that I needed to get on my mark and then get set and then go. But I'm turning that thing on its head and I'm going to do that thing in a new way. And what I say is mindset. Mindset is everything. Mindset is everything. So my mindset say, turn that thing around and I'm going to go get set and be on my mark so that I can run the race that God has for me so that I can get on my track and get in my lane and everything that beset me and everything that slows me down and everything that tries to knock me down and everything that tries to trap me and ensnare me. I lay it aside because God is summoning my name and he's saying, come on over here, daughter, and shine for me over here. And come on over here, daughter, and speak for me over here. And come on over here, daughter, and pray for me over here. And so I don't know who you are, but God said it's your time to get on your track and get in your lane because it's your time to run your race. It's not your year. It's not your year to reset. It's your year to be set. It's not your year to re reset. It's your year to be set. And if you're going to be set, you got to go. Then you got to surrender to elevated thinking. And then you got to magnify and reveal the king. Are you ready to run the race that God has for you? Are you ready to do it now and not let anything and anybody slow you down or take you out? Then I dare you to say, it's my time. 
It's my time. It's my time. It's my time to shine. Come on, anybody that feel that down in their soul, I need you to type that. It's my time to shine. It's my time to shine. I'm going to magnify and reveal the real God, the real King. Because see, when you read all of Isaiah, you'll come to find out that the children of Israel had got in a sick cycle where they would go back over and over and over again to the way they used to think and the way they used to live and constantly wanting to go back to the bondage they used to have. But somebody say, I'm not reset and I'm going to be set and I'm going to get where God wants me to be. I remember Egypt always will be what it always has been. Pharaoh always will be what he always has been. I'm getting rid of Pharaoh and I'm getting rid of Egypt. I get out of Egypt and I get Egypt out of me. So I got to get out and I got to get it out. And then I got to surrender to elevated thinking. And then I got to magnify the real king, the real God, the one who there is no other light. He's God all by himself. Beside him, there is no other. He's the first and the last, the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. There is no savior, but our God brag on yourself, God. So as I hear you brag, I begin to magnify you right along with you. I begin to tell somebody you got to trust God. You got to walk with God. You got to hold on to his hand. Don't let his hand go. Cause that's the only way you're going to walk through the fire and not get burned. That's the only way you're going to walk through the flood and it shall not sweep over your head because you say it's not my year to reset. It's my year to be set. And so I'm elevating in every area of my life that I hear God speaking to me. Do you hear God calling your name? Do you hear him saying, get in place and run your race? Do you hear him saying, get in place and run your race? Then type that on the screen for me. Somebody type that. I'm going to get in place and I'm going to run my race. I'm going to get in place and I'm going to run my race. Listen, I was looking at uh, all of those women that made their mark at the inauguration. And I mean, they just blew me away. I just loved, I loved seeing it. I, I loved how amazing it was. I, I love how powerful they was. I, I, I said, God, look at these women. These women are doing the doggone thing. And I love it, God. I, I love that the, the revolution has started. I love seeing Kamala said, you know what? Y'all didn't elect me as president, but you know what? It's my time to run my race. I started VP because what God got for me is for me. Dr. Jill Biden said, look, Kamala, you're not going to be strutting by yourself. I'm going to put on my teal and I'm going to come strutting. Michelle said, hey, don't leave me out. I still got some fire. I still got some purpose. I still got some stuff that I didn't came out of and some stuff I got to pull other people out. J-Lo say, listen, I'm more than Jenny from the block. I will dress from white from head to toe and y'all ain't never seen nobody sing America the Beautiful like me. Listen, Amanda Gorman said, I may be young, but don't count me out because of my youth. It's my time to run my race and I'm about to read this poem like you ain't never heard poetry read. I'm about to read this poem like you're hearing a sermon and when I get through, you gonna say this hill that I climb and I'm telling you right now that God says, God says that even later Gaga, who used to dress in me. He said, listen, forget those things that lie behind. Don't you let nobody keep telling you about the meat that you used to wear. You tell them about the meat that you eating right now. And you ate it up at the inauguration as you took your place. You got on your track. You got in your lane and you're ready to run your race. And so I don't know about you, but it's my time. It's my time. God has set before me a race. And so now I'm ready to forget those things that lie behind me. And I'm ready to press forward. I'm ready to run forward. I'm ready to leap over walls and bound myself through troops. You know why? Because my God will never leave me. So even if I encounter fire, I will not get burned. And even if I encounter a flood, it will not sweep over me because I got a great cloud of witnesses, a great cloud of witnesses that are telling me, lay aside the weight and the sin that so easily beset you and run your race, girl. Run your race. It's your time. It's your time. It's your time. It's your time. Come on, somebody say, it's my time. It's my time. It's my time. It's my time. I hear God telling me as, as our Bible class say, this is my exodus. I got to come out of this thing and I got to come out of this thing right now. Whoever you are, I dare you, I double dog dare you to say, I'm getting where God wants me to be because this is not my year to reset. This is my year to be set. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh, how I love you. 
Oh, how I honor you, God. Your word takes my breath away, God. Thank you for telling me to not get on my mark and then get set and then go. But thank you for telling me to go get set on my mark. God, I want, I want the new thing in my life that you have for me, God. I want to embrace it. I want to live it. I, I want to minister it out. I want to teach it out, God. I want this to be the most powerful year of you and me and me in you, God. I want you to blow my mind at what you say through me and what you say for me and, and the way that you just do things that I never thought that I could do, God. And I will see, God, that it wasn't me, but that it's you, God. So have your way right here and right now, God, with every person that's going to get on their track and every person that's going to run their race and every person that wants the new thing, God, every person that's ready to forget the old thing, ready to let it go and stop talking about it, stop being broken by it, stop being bruised by it, stop being held back by it right here and right now. We love you, God. We love you right here and right now. And I believe that there is a believer under the sound of my voice that says, God, it is your grace that has saved me. It is your grace that has saved me because when I was at my darkest, you have loved me, God. You love me, God, when I was still in Egypt. You love me, God, when I still had Egypt in me. And I committed myself to you, confess my sins. And God, you were faithful and just to cleanse me of all my Egyptian thoughts and all my Egyptian ways. And so if there's anybody under the sound of my voice, God, that needs to let go of Egypt, that needs to get out of Egypt, that needs to get Egypt out of them, God, I pray that they see your grace right now. I pray that they would extend the faith right now to be saved, to accept your gift of eternal life, God. God, I pray they hear you knocking on the door of their heart. I pray that they say, I'm ready to open up because if God the Father is living in me and God the Son is running with me and God the Holy Spirit is pulling me through, then I can run my race, but I cannot do it without God because apart from him, I can do nothing. So I'm ready to admit right now that I've been a sinner, that you died for my sins. And I accept the fact that you want to forgive me of all of my sins. And there's a new life with a new track, with a new lane, with a new race, because there's a new thing. And from this day forward, I choose to follow you, God. So God, I declare right now that I admit with my mouth. I believe with my heart and my mind. I confess with my mouth, God, that you are the Lord, God. You are Lord Jesus. And now I am saved, saved, saved. No devil can get to me. No devil can snatch me out of your hand. Saved forever, forever in your hands all the days of my life. Saved never to go back to Egypt, never to go back to talking like Egypt, never to go back to sleeping with Pharaoh and hanging with Pharaoh and, and doing Pharaoh's bidding. I will never be Pharaoh's slave ever again because I have been saved. I thank you for Calvary, God. I thank you, God, that you died that I might live for you. And so, God, I pray for every person giving their life to you and anybody giving their life to you for the very first time, God, I pray that they will put a one by their name right now. And anybody renewing their commitment to you, tired of being a backslider and tired of being prodigal, God, I pray right now somebody without a church home will say, I need a church like this. I need a word like this. I like each church. I like church online. I like being able to get my word right here and shout in my own living room and run through my own kitchen. I I love this right here. In fact, this is the church that I hear the Holy Spirit telling me needs to be my home. You know what? I'm going to give some blankets out with them. You know, I'm going to give some tents and some tarps out with them. You know, I'm going to help the hurting. I'm going to spread the gospel. I'm going to be that light on a stand where I magnify and reveal the King. God, if there's anybody that wants this church, that needs this church, that you are touching their heart, I pray they will put a two by their name, signifying that they want the hope church to be their church, God. They want the hope and the favor. They want the love and the power, the fellowship, God, of the brethren to be theirs right here and right now. We love you, God, and we thank you now for your mighty word, your mighty power, your mighty love. You are amazing. You are awesome. I praise you now, God, for anybody, anybody that may be coming home to you now. And we say to you, family, welcome home. Welcome home. Welcome home. Welcome home. 
What a word from our Savior and our God today. He is so good and he is so on time and he just does all things well. And I thank him that he knew that it was your time to run your race. He, he knew that it was your time to get in your track, in your lane, to do what no other power had enabled you to do. And so I pray if you gave your life to Christ today, that you will call me immediately following this service. I'm going to put my number on the screen for you. Um, somebody type it in the comments for me because I want anybody that needs it to have it. It's 424-200-2916, 424-200-2916. I just want you to know that I'm here for you. I'm not that kind of pastor that doesn't like to talk to people. I like to talk to every sheep and every lamb in the flock. And I want you to know that I'm available to you. And so even when I'm not available, as I showed you, some of the other ministry servants, some of the other prayer partners are available to you as well. And so I want you to know that uh, the same way that I told you, you could call Mama Betty, you can call me the same way. And, and Mama Betty is there for you if you can't reach me, but there's my number on the screen, 424-200-2916. It would be my honor to be your pastor. It would be my honor to be your shepherd, to teach you and to lead you, to train you up and build you up to hold you accountable and to love your darkest hours and to celebrate with you on your highest mountains. I would absolutely love that. If you did not get a chance to put your uh, prayer request down, you can put your prayer request down as well now as well. We want um, your prayer requests, all of our prayer partners and prayer warriors. And I mean, they are warriors. They have prayed this week. We had such a, a shout of Thanksgiving on Friday because let me tell you something, it was day after day. We were just coming through uh, tragedy after tragedy and tribulation after tribulation. And so they were literally on the job every day and every day they did what God asked them to do. And so I pray that you'll put your prayer request down and um, um, Shelly has it right there. She's putting it on the screen for you now that if you need any prayer or encouragement, you can call or inbox um, her. And, and if you, even if you want to join the prayer team, remember what I said to you, you can absolutely join that prayer team by meeting them on uh, tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. on the uh, prayer line, on the prayer line. If you didn't get a chance to give, you still have that opportunity to give and we would love for you to do so. We would absolutely love for you to do so. Meet them, uh, give your best gift as God has given you the opportunity. If this um, blesses you, if it, if it just touches your heart, then we want you to have the ability to say, you know what, this is good ground. I learn here. I'm blessed here and I want to sow a seed here. And so you let the Lord lead you in your best giving. And then you make sure that you come back and you meet us here. Um, you meet us here on tomorrow for the Daily Hope Devotion. And then don't forget tomorrow morning, as I already shared, is when you can come in for prayer and be a part of this incredible prayer team that is on fire. Anybody and everybody is welcome to be in prayer. Anybody and everybody is welcome to be in prayer. This is not for the elite. Um, if you wanna just come and be prayed for or just be a part of the glory cloud falling down, you can do so. It is glorious and it is awesome. I love you, family of faith, and, and I pray with all my heart and all my soul that that word blessed you and that it blessed you in a powerful way. Don't forget that on tomorrow evening, um, tomorrow evening at, uh, what's the time? At six o'clock, six o'clock p.m. West Coast time. Don't forget that our think tank group is going to be on our prayer line. They're going to be on our uh, prayer line. I'm, I'm sorry, they're going to be on our Zoom. They're going to be on our Zoom. So make sure that you're a part of that as well, because if you want to be a part of us blessing others, then we would love to have you um, come on in and be a part of that. And then speaking of Zoom, you know that we want to, um, in fact, let me, before I go to that, let me just say a word about the new member class that we had on this week. There's the Zoom information that we had from the class this week. Our new members class was so powerful on Thursday. Our new members class was so powerful that we had a member, we had a, a lamb of God join the flock. Mama C, Mama C, powerful warrior of God who the Lord has brought in, joined the church on Thursday as we were celebrating 
with our brand new uh, 15 members that joined. They were there for their new members class. Mama C came in to welcome them and celebrate them. And by the end of the class, Mama C said, the Holy Spirit has told me that this should be my church. Our Mama C in the comments, you guys, is Cheryl Johnson. So I just want you to take this opportunity to pour some love on Mama C. Cheryl Johnson is Mama C. So now we got Mama Betty and Mama C. So Mama B and Mama C. And so we thank the Lord it was just amazing. And so um, as we come back next week, I, I say all the time that anybody that wants to come to any of the classes can come to the classes. So I hope and pray that you do. Now, don't forget Sunday school is coming back on uh, this coming. Sunday school is coming back on this coming Sunday at eight o'clock, eight o'clock. Um, and that's a call in class as well. So God bless you and God keep you. Y'all thank y'all for just bearing with me through all of the technical difficulties and everything that we were doing. Whew. Lord, y'all don't know. I just be blessing my soul when, when the end of the service come and, and then we have done what the Lord asked us to do. And so now I want you to meet me on Zoom. Meet me on Zoom. It is an awesome fellowship. Remember, it is our afterglow and we would love to see you there. Um, somebody put the meeting ID on the screen. I'm going to put it on the screen as soon as I find the card here. But the meeting ID is my phone number, which is 424 424- 200-2916-424-200-2916. And so um, if you put that on, I'm going to put that new members. I can't find the, the, we keep the same Zoom ID for everything. So let me just put this up. There go to the Zoom ID right there. So you, we would love to have you come for our 15 minutes of gathering and be a part of this Zoom fellowship. Now it's just 15 minutes to check in, 15 minutes to allow us to love on you and 15 minutes to just pray together as we go into this week together. I want you to remember the word that the Lord gave us this week. It's your time to run your race. So don't worry about getting on your mark and then getting set and go. You go, you get set, and then you get on your mark. You go, you get out, you get it out, you get set, you surrender to elevated thinking, you get on your mark, you magnify, and you reveal our King, our King the one who is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. There is no other God beside him. And where do you magnify and reveal him? Starting at home, starting at home. I love you, family of faith. I praise God for you. I thank God for you. I thank God for all of you that enjoy. Did you enjoy worship today? Come on, if you enjoy worship, let me know that this word touched your soul and that it meant something to you and that it blessed you in a powerful way. There go the Zoom thing. Now, listen, this one says call in at 10, but it's it's the same thing. It's the same thing. This just gives you the Zoom rules <laughs> so that you have them. But this is when we were doing it at the beginning of service. Now we do it at the end. So ignore that part about before service, just you can call in now. And so come on in and, and meet us on Zoom. But I pray that today was a blessing for you. I want to see you back here um, for our Daily Hope Devotion, our Bible class this coming week. And of course, I want to see you on next Sunday. Of course, I want to see you on next Sunday. So you come back in and you make sure that you are a part. We thank the Lord for you watching with us today. Um, make sure if you have any urgent needs that you reach out to those prayer servants. If you gave your life to Christ, you can call me immediately following this service. I love you, family of faith. I praise God for you. Thank you for all of you who sent me the well wishes before I preach for Bishop Gordon this morning. I preach for the Family of Faith Christian Center. And oh my God, it was just awesome. It was wonderful. And I thank you guys for covering me in that way. Thank you for everybody that covered my dad who went to the hospital this week, who is home, who is safe, who is fine. Thank you. Thank you for those who covered Regina in the beginning of the week who went into cardiac arrest and is fine today. In fact, the hospital let her husband in to come see her. Thank you for everybody who wished my baby London a very happy birthday. And some of you even um, blessed her little cash app. And, and, and she told me, mama, some people that reached out to me for my cash app. I said, well, look at the Lord. Won't he do it? And, and I tell y'all all the time when my babies um, um, are to be celebrated and you celebrate them with me, that means everything because they really do give up a lot and they really do allow me, uh, they allow me this space and this place to, to be 
be where I am and be the mother that I am and to serve you the way that I do. Um, because if they did not sacrifice so much of their time, Jesus, if they did not give up um, so much of my time with them, I, I don't know. I, I, I literally don't know uh, what I would do. And so the fact that you bless them when it is their uh, graduation and their, you, you help me to let them know that I serve a kingdom that has my back, even with my family, even with my marriage, my children, my parents. And so I love you. And I thank you for that. I thank you with all my heart. And on behalf of London and all of you that even just said happy birthday to her on the little card that I made for her. I, I thank you for that. I thank you for covering my baby with me. You guys, for those of you who don't know, I got four kids. Angelo and Antonio are my twins and they are now 27 years old and 28 years old. And then my son Christian is 25. And then my baby girl is 24. And so uh, well, Christian just turned 26. Both of them had January birthdays, but <laughs> bless the Lord. My kids getting older. I'm getting older. But I thank y'all for covering them, for covering my three grandbabies, Harmony and uh, King and AG. That means everything to me. Even my little God babies, Pooh and Jade. I thank God for all of your love that you extend to my husband, to my parents, to my dogs, Lolo and love. I love you, family of faith. And now I'll meet you on Zoom in just a second. Have a great week, an awesome week. And I will meet you back here tomorrow morning for our daily hope devotion where y'all know we get it in every day. 6.55 in the morning where you are in the place on time. Make sure you share this word, share, share, and share again over and over again. I love you family and I'll meet you on Zoom in just a second. God bless.